All right. Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Junior, and I would like to welcome you all back to the Daily Digital. Um, this is the one show where I keep you all well informed of what's going on with our digital world. There's a lot of technology that's been going around and not a lot of people understand fully all about it. So I just want to make sure that you guys are all aware. Today's date is Saturday, August the 6th, and we have another wonderful show for you guys here today. We're going to be talking all about, well, not all about, two of the things that we're going to be talking about is about the music industry, one involving a artist named Snoop Dogg and how he plans to basically turn the music industry on his head with NFTs and then also a platform that is actually already kind of doing that. The next thing that we're going to talk about is a summit for all of the coders and developers out there that is coming up by Adobe. And then the last one being a company that is actually basically taking the NFTs uh, or the marketplace for NFTs and allowing people to piggyback off of them. It's going to be pretty interesting to see uh, how that all works out. So without further ado, we are going to take a quick break here and then we're going to be jumping right into it. All right, now we are back and we are still live. So the first thing off the block here, we have Adobe. Adobe is the developer or creators of, let's say like Photoshop. I'm pretty sure we've all heard the term Photoshop before. Uh, they also make different programs and stuff like that. Adobe Premiere Pro, which is for video editing, motion graphics, you can do use um, uh, After Effects, uh, if you want to do vector graphics and stuff like that for graphic design work, you can use Adobe Illustrator. And they also have one that's called Code Fusion. Uh, cold as in a chew, a chew type of code, not cold as in, hey, we're coding an app or something like that. Um, but the app actually allows you to do coding. And they are now coming out, or I guess they have been came or have came out for a while now, uh, a summit called cold fusion and this is actually the 10th edition of it so i'm assuming it's been going on for 10 years i'm not sure if this is an annual thing or a semester quarter kind of thing but um this is the 10th edition of it it's going to begin october 3rd through the 4th and from their website i couldn't really find too much about it uh, this is a quick overview it's finally happening for the first time in three years adobe cold fusion summit will be in person join us for the third and Join us on the 3rd and 4th of October for the 10th edition of the Marquee Event. Meet coders from across the globe, learn from industry professionals, and dive into our latest release as you explore coding like never before. And that's not all. On October 5th, we're hosting a certification program as well. Join in and earn your very own Adobe badge and certificate. What are you waiting for? Whether you are a beginner or a seasoned coder, the Adobe Cold Fusion Summer 2022 is where you need to be. Um, the location is going to be in Las Vegas, Nevada at the Mirage Hotel, I guess. I think it's all hotels out there in Las Vegas. Um, so you can kind of, you know, go through there. These are the ticket prices. So for the event price, access all the workshops and stuff like that is $99. So let's just say a hundred bucks. And then for the premium pass, you get to uh, actually have access to the Cold Fusion certification, certification training on October the 5th uh, for $100 more basically. So 200 bucks in total. And that's really all about it. I mean, they have a register page here. Their FAQ page did not really have much are tickets refundable? When is the registration deadline? Which is the closest airport? A letter to your manager. I have specific questions that are not covered here. Uh, that's probably what I would click on. Uh, they have a why would you attend kind of situation here. Connect, interact, and learn. Uh, the designers, developers, innovators, thought leaders, business strategists, and enthusiasts like you. Find them all at Cold Fusion Summit. Uh, leverage the opportunity to interface the in, with individuals um, from organizations across the spectrum and uh, around the globe. And I mean, you guys can kind of look through here, but I did find from last year, this 
website called Terra Tech. I'm not sure if Terra is a person, uh, but from Terra Tech, they actually discuss Cold Fusion 2021. So let's see. Um, so the basics: the Cold Fusion Summit Conference is a confluence of everything in the realm of web applications. If you develop web applications, this is a place to be for designers, developers, strategists, and thought leaders. The Cold Fusion Summit provides the perfect forum to exchange ideas, inspiration, and experiences. Not only that, as well as opportunities to interact with Cold Fusion experts, domain leaders, peers, get to learn about the latest technologies, techniques, and strategies to rapidly grow, build and successfully deliver web applications to the market. With the web applications world evolving rapidly, explore how Cold Fusion is driving change and how you can propel this dynamism. Um, and I'm, I'm just actually gonna look at the table of contents, see if there's anything else. Um, so you guys can just kind of check here for the agenda. They have stuff on block. I mean, again, this is last year's uh, on this year's website. I don't see an agenda. I don't see, I mean, I don't see really anything. Maybe it's cause I'm not signed in or something or, or what, but this is, is interesting like they don't really have much information on here so I'm kind of going off of what they did last year uh, which I believe was you know virtual because this year marks the first year they um, they're actually doing this in person again but so a brief history on how cold fusion got to where they are now hidden gems uh, CFML design patterns the dawn of machine learning UX best practices CFX blockchain Faster apps that won't get crushed with queues. CSS crash course for CSS haters or novices. How to be a cipher cyber superhero. Um, using Cold Fusion with no code and GraphQL. Yeah, so I mean, based on this, it's really again, it's really all about building web applications and building them with like you know HTML, CSS, JavaScript and uh, so on and so forth. So if you are interested in all of these things, I would definitely recommend you going ahead and checking these out. Um, Cold Fusion, in my opinion, sounds like a really big event. Adobe is a major company in the industry. So with them throwing it on, I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a plethora of people that's going to be there, really big names, talking about a whole lot of technology. And uh, you know, it seems like from the lack of information from their website, you really have to be there really to get, you know, the whole gist of everything that they have to offer. Uh, I'm really surprised they didn't have an agenda on there, but to each his own. Uh, the event again is October the 3rd and 4th with the bonus day on the 5th, depending on how much you pay. So if you go, let me know. I'm really interested to hear more about it. Uh, I myself more than likely will not be going to it, uh, even though I wish I could, I already have pre-planned stuff that date. All right, so for the next thing that we have here, is a company called Royal who is selling royalty ownership as NFTs to fans. Now this here is really, really big inside of the NFT space to where basically, if you've ever watched, uh, what is it called? Shark Tank. There's a guy on there, his name is, what well, they call him, Mr. Wonderful. And his real name is Kevin O'Leary, but they call him Mr. Wonderful. And they actually basically, uh, or he actually, really 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 loves what they call a royalty and if you think of a royalty you think of like a dividend so anytime that a product sells you actually get paid based on that so what they're actually doing this company here is actually allowing people to get into the music industry by um essentially buying into some of these musicians their um songs and stuff like that so that anytime anything happened with this song, you pretty much get paid. You get paid a royalty for owning parts and bits and pieces of that. Um, so looks like a couple of big names actually um, kind of did a bit of this. Snoop Dogg, Eminem, and Grimes. Um, okay, yeah, so here we go. So they, they are a marketplace where users can buy and sell percentages of songs as NFTs to earn royalties in return. Uh, this company was founded by Justin Blau and Justin Ross. 
Um, and it creates an entirely new way for musicians to engage with their fans. I think they had... Yeah, Royal enables fans to be a part of the artist's journey by selling song rights as NFTs, giving a chance for anyone to own a piece of their favorite musician's song and earn royalties with the artist, along with the artist. Fans can support artists by co-owning songs and having a real stake in that artist's future, which creates a natural positive sum case where both uh, both parties have shared aligned interest in seeing the artist become successful. People are more incentivized to care, share, and be a tastemaker when they have actual ownership of it. So exactly how does it work? Uh, this is kind of part I want to go to. So for example, Diplo, he dropped a song on uh, Royal called Don't Forget Me Love. He allocated 20% of royalty ownership in the shape of 2,110 NFTs based on three different tiers. Owners of the gold, gold tier token have access to the Royal Collector Discord channel and get 0.004% of the streaming revenue from that song. So every time that song is streamed, you get a royalty based on that. Holders of the diamond token get a guest list pass for a Diplo show, first dibs on all future Diplo drops, an exclusive Diplo DJ mix, access to the Discord, and 0.7% of the revenue generated from that song. With this, he raised $398,000 from the token sale alone which would have taken almost a hundred million streams on Spotify. I don't, <laughs> I mean, I guess you, I wish you guys could like really just see my excited face right here because I mean, that's just crazy. I talked about before how all of this technology is really cutting out the middleman. Spotify is a middleman. YouTube is a middleman using the blockchain. You are the owner of your, your stuff, your digital assets, um, every every one of your creations and stuff like that. So now, what you can actually do is just go ahead and place some of this stuff on a blockchain, turn it into an NFT, have a smart contract attached to it, and a smart contract that says everything that was happens to it. And now, as you can see here, people can actually, if they actually like your music, they can own a piece of your music and then keep making money with it along the way. Um, and it also they can uh, have like you know special access to a whole bunch of stuff as well so this nft stuff is really really booming uh in the music industry it looks like so uh yeah still in its early stages it raised 16 million dollars royal is giving artists another path they can take to releasing their songs and offers a new potential for revenue streaming um Yeah, I mean, I see absolutely nothing wrong with this. I see absolutely nothing wrong with this at all. I mean, this is just like crazy, ridiculous, cool. Uh, let me jump over here now to the actual website, the Royal.io. Currently still in beta. Again, this is a new company. Um, okay, so Elefante, they are currently sold out. Let me see. So yeah, a bunch of different artists down here. Big Boy is on here, Diplo is on here, The Chainsmokers is on here. Um, and again, it just all depends on the artist themselves. Like if you want to allow people to get 420 tokens, you can allow, or you could, if you want to give up ownership in amount of percentage of up to like 50%, however much you want to, you can do that. You can do that in the form of how many tokens you want to. You can set all of the um, percentage amounts that you want to as well. Uh, how does it work? The artist shares ownership uh, musicians use Royal to share a portion of streaming royalty rights with their fans and collectors, allowing them to be co-owners on a song or an album. Once you invest, when you buy music on Royal, you get exclusive access to streaming royalty rights that generate income plus curated benefits from the artist. Uh, and ev everyone wins for the first time. Artists and fans are partners in the ownership of music. When artists win, everyone wins. Um, and you guys can kind of read through all this as well. Uh, I just want to actually click on, I mean, I'm going to click on the chain. I'm going to click on Big Boy. He's right in the center. He's got 420 tokens. Uh, Kill Jill fe featuring Killer Mike and Jeezy. Big Boy, the artist. Uh, 
Okay, just kind of talks about the song there. I just want to see like. Okay, so yeah, so they have here two levels, platinum and diamond. Uh, ownership of this token is 0.043%. You get first dibs on the next big boy drop, exclusive access to the unreleased music, access to the Royal Collector Discord channel. And then also you can go to the diamond level, which is $5,000. Uh, and again, you guys might think like, okay, why would I buy this song for $5,000? Well, just imagine this song being streamed over and over and over and over and over again, and you get 0.7243. So let's just, I mean, we can just do the math. So let's just say this song is streamed 100,000 times. So 100,000, and then you have 0.7243. So every time it streams, you get, you know, I, I'm going to just, let me just, uh, let me just do that point seven. If I'm doing my math right. Is that right? Did you get $72,430 for every? I'm going to have to look into this more. Because, I mean, that's ridiculous crazy. If you buy something for $5,000, all it's doing is streaming. You didn't even create the music, and you get paid seventy two grand. Like, even if it's not right, even if it's like, I mean, <laughs> it's like, that's, this is, even if it's like 10 grand. And again, it's all just depends on the streams. Musicians get streamed every single day. Yeah, I might have to do some more research on this to figure out exactly how does this math work out. Um, oh, I mean, it's already people that's been like collecting this too. Yeah, because it says here the amount raised is $173,000. Um, and I mean, this is like, this is a big game changer for, let's say, for example, new artists. Our big boy is a big artist. So of course, yeah, he's going to, he's going to do pretty well. New artists though, if they come on here and people start liking their music, I mean, they could, they can, a new artist might do a low budget music video and after going on there, raising all of that money, money, they can now do a full on music video. Um, they can now add features because some people are like, charging $150,000 just to be featured on the song. Like if you want um, Lil Baby on a song or if you want Meg Thee Stallion in a song, you might have to pay them $100,000. How can you get them on a song? This is a way to actually do that. Um, and then actually the people that, you know, um, bought the NFT as well, they as well will get, you know, revenue from it. So the, if you have ownership in something, as, as I said, the more you'll care, the more you'll share. Uh, you will share a whole lot of their song and their music and stuff like that when you have ownership of it um, because it's gonna help you in the long run as well. Um, and with that being said, our next story here is with Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg, back in February? I wanna say, yeah, so on February 9th, 2022, Snoop Dogg announced that he would acquire Death Row Records, a music level that changed several owners uh, after filing bankruptcy in 2006. Um, for those who aren't familiar with the hip hop culture, Death Row Records was founded in 91 by Dr. Dre uh, and the infamous Suge Knight and several other individuals. I wonder why Dr. Dre like, didn't want it, but I guess it went bankrupt, so whatever. Um, but yeah, so, you know, Tupac, I believe, was on Death Row Records, Snoop Dogg was on Death Row Records, Easy e all those artists and stuff like that. Uh, out of the um, west side of the world in California and whatnot. Um, they are all, um, or they were all on like Death Row Records. So Death Row is not new to the music scene. They are a major label. Um, but I guess Soup Dog bought it in February. And what he looks to do is actually turn it into an NFT label. So he wants basically all the songs to be essentially NFTs. Um, and he did so by actually acquiring all the, I think he acquired all the rights to the songs or the, the artists and songs and stuff like that are actually currently on the label uh, so that he can turn them into NFTs. Uh, I think they also mentioned that he himself plans to remaster some of his um, songs and stuff like that, some of his albums so that they can become NFTs. He already came out with the new album back on death row. This came out as an NFT and he raised or he, Got a lot of money from that as well. Uh, and if, if Snoop Dogg, he's really big into the NFT space. 
I think it was on Decent either on Decentraland or Sandbox, one of the two, he actually he actually had um purchased some land there and somebody paid like half a million dollars just to be his neighbor. So yeah, he's he's really big into the NFT space. He's been doing a whole lot. Him and his son actually have been doing a whole lot. Um, but it looks like, you know, based on what Royal is doing, Snoop Dogg is pretty much doing exactly that same thing with Death Row Records. Um, he essentially just wants to go ahead and take those songs, put them on the blockchain, have them up there so that people can listen to and the artist can basically cut out the middleman and, you know, get paid based on all of that. Uh, it looks like here... If he were to do it with a regular label, he would only get 15% in royalties himself, and then the label would get 85%. So now you're just basically cutting out, you know, the whole middleman aspect of it. Um, and he's, I mean, it sounds like he's okay with being a label owner himself and allowing people, his artists, to jump on as, you know, NFT artists pretty much. Um, so yeah, I think that's, uh, I think with those two kind of i don't know if snoop dogg is doing any partnership with the royal platform it looks like nas he's in partnership with it um but the industry for music or pretty much every industry in my opinion is going to change once they kind of figure out how can they utilize web3 technology how can they utilize nfts how can they utilize blockchain how can they utilize cryptocurrency uh how can they utilize the metaverse all five of those is that blockchain web3 nfts cryptocurrency metaverse oh ai so six of those actually once they use all six of those technologies and really bring it um home man that's gonna be crazy like a lot of industries are really going to be disrupted because of this new technology it's, it's interesting all right, and one way you can actually do that is by this next company, which is the last story off the block here. I want to call it Zoa X O O A, which is an amazing domain. <laughs> but X O O O X O O A Zoa, they actually allow people uh, or brands to build customized experiences with unparalleled speed that power digital communities, NFT marketplaces, metaverses, and other Web3 apps through a streamlined and easy to use interface. Um, and one way that they are doing this is by white labeling uh, the marketplace. Uh, so if you don't know what white labeling is, real quick, if you have a product that you make or whatever, so let's say for the fidget spinners, right? The fidget spinners, I don't even know who the owner or creator of it was, but the finished fidget spinner, fidget spinner came out and let's say they said, hey, um, you can basically, or if the fidget spinner was licensed and patented, they'll say, hey, you can actually use this fidget spinner to sell on your own. And you don't even have to do it under my name. You can do it under your own names. You can sell these fidget spinners as your own product and put your own name on it. Uh, so with white labeling, uh, NFT marketplace, it's no longer saying like, hey, we're going to have this marketplace and you guys can use it. It's saying, hey, we built the marketplace. How about you just put your own name on it? You market it, you use it, you bring the customers to it. And it, essentially we're just the one that's running it on the back end. We get paid a little bit, you get paid a whole lot. It's a win-win kind of situation. Um, I mean, that's just amazing because if you get like, let's say a hundred people trying to white label a NFT marketplace that you created, again, you get paid a little bit, but if you get paid a little bit by a hundred people, that turns out to be a whole lot. Uh, and that's kind of what ZOA is actually doing. So ZOA solves the biggest legal and compliance con concerns in the NFT space. Uh, they offer NFT origination, differentiate your NFT with a rich, fully branded drop experience. They white label the marketplace. So create a N complete NFT user experience without leaving your own website. And then they have metaverse experiences, accelerate NFT utility in games, immersive experiences and metaverses. Um, so yeah, so if you've been looking to try and get into more with these NFTs and stuff like that, I would definitely recommend you looking into ZOA because they have a bunch of different, you know, products and stuff like that for you to use. Uh, and it looks like it's all no code. I mean, so yeah, so you can create a branded marketplace. Oh, 
Okay, yeah, so is an add-on to your NFT origination offering that enables brands to create a comprehensive NFT experience for collectors. Okay, so it's add-on to the NFT origination. So side-by-side -side marketplace for the highest degree of liquidity, enable concurrent uh, NFT listings on your marketplace and, and OpenSea, protect mainstream audiences, NFT marketplace essentials, standalone marketplace. Oh, so you can do all three. Okay, so you can have your own marketplace. I mean, this is this is interesting, guys. If I, I want to look at the NFT origina origination first. Build your own fully branded NFT drop experience. Deploy one of uh, your NFT solution templates. Customize your app to fit your required branding and mechanics. Mint your NFTs and set your drops. Yeah, you got a fully brand experience, comprehensive, comprehensive drop mechanics. Yeah, I'll have to like learn more, definitely learn more about this. I only just recently learned about this company um, through my research and stuff like that. So I don't, I don't have too much information on them. Again, my whole goal is, to, hey, if you're interested in doing stuff like this, you guys go here, <laughs> click on learn more. And then uh, do some further research if that is what uh, you are trying to do. Uh, I myself, I'll probably look into this. Maybe not in soon, but probably in the next year or so, uh, I'll be looking to actually like do an NFT full drop using them. Mark white label to marketplace. Let's see metaverse experiences. What can they do with that? Oh, okay. Yeah, develop and go live, comprehensive platform. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so gaming and virtual world engines, yeah. Alright. Um so yeah, so that was Zoa. You guys let me know what you think of Zoa. The description for their website is in the um the link for their website is in the description below this video um all my social media handles are also below this video as well um again let me know what you guys think of them and um check in with me tomorrow well tomorrow's sunday so definitely check in with me on monday for the next episode of the daily digital i appreciate your guys time and see you all later